And so, I've done this book in many different ways, but today what I decided to do is take this little book and do kind of an art journal theme in that, um, you know, our home re represents our safe place. It's kind of our happy place. And um, we, sorry, I was playing with the, the camera thing. Um, it's our happy place. It's very safe. So I decided that I would take um, this and create an art journal along uh, that theme in that it would be my place where I could use all kinds of different art mediums, practice handwriting, um, practice techniques, and not have to be afraid of um, creating this wonderful masterpiece of a canvas that we may not end up liking because we're not all that familiar with the products. So with that in mind, I'm going with the house theme and doing kind of each room of the house where the entryway is kind of our welcoming place. Um, that's the, the spot that the first, that the people see. It's the first thing in your home that they see. You always want it to be welcoming kind of clean um, that you know mine always has a pile of shoes and what have you and um, <laughs> oops so I started with with my entrance and then um, your living room that's kind of your place of um, where you gather your social gathering and your living room for me my living room is very colorful and I like to have um, it very comfy and pops of color everywhere. Uh, your kitchen is your place of nourishment. So in my art journal, my kitchen would be the place where you, you kind of nourish your creativity. Um, bedroom, relaxation, tranquil. Bathroom, uh, the place of cleansing. Um, there's that wonderful art quote by Picasso, something about art washes away the dirt of everyday life. So that would be kind of my theme in, in my bathroom part of my, my journal. So with that, I'm going to show you, these are two pages that I have completed. And I have, I took two pieces of the journal paper and did each piece and then I sewed them together, leaving a space open for a little tag, which is my recipe card. This tells me what I used on this page. So if I wanted to go back and I think, oh, that was a really cool paint, what was it? This little card tells me that. And I'll have that in, in all of my pages. Um, because a lot of times I will do something and I have no clue a week later, a month later, what I did, what I used. So this is kind of my little my little recipe book. So we're going to start with some of these pages and I have um, gesso. This is a new product for Prima. This is a, um, good, you can tell it's a good size jar of um, heavy gesso in white. I'm going to take my brush and I already have one of the uh, brown craft paper pages done for some reason I found it in there so I'm not going to do one of those and I'm going to just brush kind of haphazardly I'm not um, interested in being neat or uh, covering the entire page. Somebody just wrote, they don't remember what they did yesterday. That is so me. And it's so difficult in your craft world 
because if you're anything like me, you've got a hundred million different products. Sometimes you use them once and you have no idea what you used or what color you used. <clears throat> now, I love when people do art journals with mediums, with paint and sprays, because they get kind of crunchy and stiff and a little bit of wrinkle. Um, I don't like a ton of wrinkle. And you can see how this page right here is kind of um, bowing up. We're going to take and we're going to do the other side. Whenever you put something wet on paper, whatever it is, paint, gesso, spray, it shrinks up the paper. So to do both sides, you're going to have less um, bow and less wrinklage. It's still going to, you're still going to have that nice crispy. Frank came in bothering me. I didn't have the first minute recorded. Okay. I clicked the button, but it didn't work. Okay. So, anyway, okay, so we're going to let these dry a little bit. And you can use, of course, your heat gun on, on this. I'm going to just lock this for a little bit. I don't know if that's a word, walk, but it is today. And I'm going to do a few different things on each of these. And I'm going to kind of do the paint part all at once so you can, um, so they can dry as I do the next. Oh man, I should have worn my, my holy jeans that I always wipe my paintbrushes on. But I did not. This is a cheap watercolor set. And I mean cheap. It's like the $4.99 from Michael's or Joann's or one of those. And I'm just going to um, start coloring, kind of like when we were in kindergarten. Or kindergarten, as most people would say. And I'm just throwing colors. No rhyme, no reason. I have to put a little bit of yellow. I'm into yellow lately for some reason. I'm going to let that sit here and dry for a minute. I'm going to take, um, let's do it on the, I haven't done it on this brown paper. This is a new line. I don't believe this is in stores yet, but it's coming soon. It's our chalkboard paint, and it comes in just a trillion different colors, um, as you can see by that label. Uh, and I just have a few here that I was able to grab some of the photo, um, um, come on, you know what word I'm looking for and I can't think of it. Prototypes. Chalkboard paint, um, I've used in a lot of different canvas um, projects and I never thought of putting it on paper. But look how beautifully this goes on paper. I'm even going to take the back side of this um, journal page has some writing on it. It came that way. If you put one coat of chalkboard paint over it, that um, writing still comes through. It's very cool. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm not even cleaning my brush in between until I get to colors that are way different. When I get to the pinks, I will. I'm going to use a little bit of this blue because I haven't used this. So we'll see, it looks really pretty. 
Look how pretty that is. The colors are um, pretty vibrant. I'm going to let that dry. And then I have um, another paint I'm going to try. These are acrylic silks, kind of difficult to find these days. Something's going on with the company, I don't know what. But I used it before I knew that on one of these pages. So we're just going to use it, use them up today. I'm using kind of a skinny brush. These um, paints, if I recall, they have a, uh, they're made with mica or something, which gives them almost a fish scale type. Um, oh, this one's dried up. Just gonna throw that away right now. It's almost a fish scale. Type glisten, it's very fine but very pretty. And um, we're just going to use some of our Prima sprays over this when I'm done, just to show you guys how it looks over, how that works over acrylic paint too. So I'll just keep going. I don't use these a lot. So they're getting a little bit dry. I really wanted that uh, dark blue in here, but I'm not going to get that. So this is going over the gesso. And what gesso does um, for those of you that don't know, gesso is actually a primer that um, fine artists use in their canvas work. It primes their canvas or their wood, whatever they're painting on. It's got a little bit of um, plaster of Paris in it. So it creates a very smooth um, painting surface and it takes to the pigment really well. Um, as crafter type artists, when we put it on paper, if you use it on your brown craft paper, it gives you a surface with that white so your colors will be more true. Um, putting it on any kind of paper, it kind of seals that paper so your paint isn't going to absorb into it and Instead, it lays on top of the gesso a little bit nicer, if that makes sense, and your um, colors stay a little more true. So these are all pretty much dry. <clears throat> I'm going to now take some of my stencils, and I'm going to use some of the uh, Prima Bloom Sprays. And I am going to do this without thinking. Without thinking, is this color going to match? Is this color going to stay? Will the yellow show over the blue? What, is it going to turn to green? I don't know. And the only way I'm going to find out is to do it. And like I said, I've been really into yellow lately. And there is... the yellow. This is um, sorbet. We have a couple of different yellows. This is the brighter of the two. And um, I use this a lot on my tags because it just kind of makes color pop. Um, here's a color that I 
have not used a lot, so I'm going to try it. And it's glistening, or no, this is soft teal. I lied, I thought I had glistening waves. I've used soft teal. I kind of want a different blue. Ooh. Well, didn't, didn't that turn out right? This was a bottle just sitting down here that I had no idea what it was. It was very bright, which is okay because I'm going to blot some of that up. And it sprayed kind of funny, but that's okay too because you know what? It's practice. Ooh, I actually really like that spot. Let's see if I can kind of recreate another one down here. Ooh. Beautiful. I thought I was going to hate it. I thought I was going to cry. And I like it. Try and keep somewhat clean throughout this. So there I've done a little bit of stenciling. Now, you can use a heat gun on this spray, or you can um, also blot it to dry, and your color still stays on um, pretty nicely. Um, what I'm going to do now is see how this chalkboard paint will take to a stencil. I have no idea. I've never stenciled with chalkboard paint. So let me get my crummy brush. You can use a stencil brush or um, sometimes I'll have just really stiff old crummy brushes that work perfectly for stenciling. And I'm going to use this pinkish color which is called Plum. I think it's really pretty. And just very lightly I like to stencil with a really light hand sometimes in the beginning. It comes out pretty bright. Come out pretty. And let's do let's do a smaller one. The chalkboard paint does dry pretty fast. So you don't have to be all that concerned. when you're doing this. Um, this stencil is really cool. It's a poppy stencil made by Prima. I don't know what the name of it is. I just found it. And it has a corner poppy, which I like. So it just fits nicely in there. So I'm trying to decide if I want another piece. Let's do another piece right here because sometimes I don't know when to stop. I'm like everybody else. When do I stop? So, that's the chalkboard paint used through a stencil on paper. I liked it. I liked it better than acrylic paint actually because it's lighter. Um, when you stencil, you don't want to stencil with a heavy hand. You want to stencil um, with a very dry brush with very little paint. And this being, um, it has that translucent quality, so it's stenciled really nicely. I've blotted out some of that stencil just to allow it to dry. Um, when I did this with watercolor, it came out way too bright for me. So how I toned that down, and this one, for whatever reason, it didn't come out that bright to me. But how I toned it down, um, I used, Darn it. No, this is right. Um, the Bloom Spray Pearl. 
white. And I know you won't be able to see this oh. very well, but it adds a glistening, just pearly, pearly um, coating of spray. And it's just a very, very, very light pearl, which um, tones down your colors just a tad. Um, my favorite color, and I'm going to use this just because it's my favorite color, is uh, the peony. I use, I drink this. I swear I drink it. It's just a beautiful coral shade. And I was using it through a um, chicken wire stencil, a reverse chicken wire. And it just added, it kind of smeared something in there, which actually looks really beautiful. So I like it. The chicken wire, because um, the pearl paint was still on there wet, it came out um, kind of blurry, which I'm fine with because this is practice. Now I'm going to take a piece of this punchinella, which is um, kind of an old fashioned uh, florist ribbon that florists used to use back in the old days, and then crafters discovered it. I'm going to use our, blah, blah, blah. I'm looking at everything thinking, what am I going to use first? Our modeling paste. This is a brand new um, product. It's a matte modeling paste. And I already had a jar open over here. I'm going to put some down on my Mat. I'm not using a mat today. I'm using brown paper so I can just throw it away and I don't have to worry about cleaning. I'm going to take some of, I can't decide what color I want. I don't want that color. I want, I'm going to do the teal. And I'm just spraying that teal directly in this paste to give it a nice color. I don't want it really dark. And I'm going to take my punchinella and I'm randomly going to put the modeling paste through that. I am going to take more of that paste. Some of this stuff I haven't even tried before, so we're like adding the chalkboard paint to it. <clears throat> I have no idea if this will work, so we're gonna see. We'll take that. I don't want the pot I want. I didn't grab a lot of these colors. <coughs> like I said, these are prototypes, so not a, all of them are even labeled. This one is called Golden. And I'm going to see what happens over. I put it over a color so we could see what it looked like over a color and then I put it over its own color. This was the golden paint and then this is the modeling paste. So this could actually create a really nice texture doing a tone on tone, which I like to do. My, um, I'm going to be blue by the time I go home. <coughs> 
when I do any of my Canvas classes or even tag classes that are <clears throat> using a lot of sprays and, and paints, I do things very, um, very blended and I do a lot of tone on tone because I like my actual artwork, which is usually a girl and clothes, I want it to pop out. So for me to do things like this is um, unusual, but it gets me out of my comfort zone, which we all need to do sometimes. I'm going to make sure this is dry. And again, you can use the heat gun. Um, the paper towel actually just gave me a wonderful texture that I really like. The little bumps came out, so that was cool. My favorite thing to do, and this is not very um, technique savvy at all, but it's still my favorite thing to do. In the whole wide world, I do it on most of my tag classes, I take my wonderful little colored chalk inks and I go through a punchinella. In random places, I almost always use yellow because it's very light and very subtle <clears throat> and it just adds a really nice layer. Um, that, I can't even read it you guys, Colt's foot something because it's white print. It's not because my eyes are bad, it's white printing on a bright yellow label. This one is vintage pink which I use a ton of this color. and. It just adds a really nice dot effect and just layers and layers. I'd add some to this, but my modeling paste is not dry yet, so I'm going to just kind of see if I can get that to dry. Um, Punchinella, I cannot find in any store. I um, purchased it through Amazon. It comes in a huge, huge, huge roll for, I think I spent with shipping maybe $22, $23. Um, in all my classes, they get a little snip of it and it has lasted me a lifetime through classes. It will last you guys more than a lifetime to use it at home. <clears throat> if you do swaps and all those fun little mail things, you can um, include them in your projects because it's just a really nice thing for people to receive because you get, you use them a lot. Okay, we have another new item. It's called Texture Paste. And this one is Gold Crackle. Um, if you guys invest in these products, I recommend you keep these sealers on as much as possible because it does help to keep them from drying out. This is a paste that's just super, super juicy, pretty. And um, I used it on one of my chipboard pieces on the refrigerator. And um, you're not gonna be able to see the crackles that well. They're very fine, but you can see how it's kind of uneven and it just gives you that real artsy, artsy touch. <clears throat> and I'll show you how I did that um, refrigerator. These are the furniture pieces. Um, that you can purchase with the house book. 
I already did the refrigerator, so I'm going to do the stove. I put a nice dollop of this on. Now because the color is so similar to the chipboard, I did not put gesso on this. Normally, I would put some gesso to make the color a little more true. You're not supposed to put a heat gun on this, so I am not going to. I'm going to let it dry. <clears throat> when it dries, I'll show you how I kind of went through and with a watercolor pencil and I made uh, the indentations a little more um, pronounced. Now, we all have paper scraps that we love and cannot throw away. At least I do. I don't know. Do you guys? So what I'm going to do is take some paper scraps and some wonderful colors. And I glued them all down. If you notice on my pages, this is how it starts. I like to have things hanging off the edge. And I'm going to try and do that with everything I create. Have a little something hanging off. And I'm not recreating these exact pages. <clears throat> I'm just um, going to do whatever I feel like doing. Because it's much more fun to do that sometimes. I need something with dark pink. Let's do this. And I'm just snipping some scraps. Um, normally on my work table I have pieces of paper that I just haven't gotten around to tossing or they're too pretty to toss. I need a really long piece, so we're gonna we're gonna play with some of these paper pieces with the matte gel. And your matte medium is going to allow you to adhere all your paper down. And I'm trying to decide. That's still smushy, so we're not going to use that. We're going to use this piece. I guess this, this piece is what I'm going to be using a lot of. And I'm going to, um, actually, I want to ink my edges. so we can really see these pieces of paper. And pink seems to be the color of the day, pink and yellow. So, always look on the back. You never know what kind of treat you're gonna find. And I have a green, I don't have a green ink, so we're going to leave. We won't ink him, but we'll still use him. And I'm going to just um, brush the backs of these, and I'm going to just start laying them down and pressing them to my surface.
my paintbrush is picking up all these pretty colors. And I'm going to make some of them going off my page. Kind of like a little tab. Of course, you know what I all you all know what I just did. I've got to make sure that doesn't glue down to my, my paper. If I was working on a craft mat, I wouldn't have to worry. So we're going to allow that to dry up a little bit. And because it's not glue, I didn't glue them down. I didn't Mod Podge them down. Um, it's going to dry like a paint would dry. So it's going to give me a surface that I can still go down with other um, mediums. Let's dry. So I may see what happens if I... The yellow didn't show up. I didn't think it would, but I wanted to try it. It's like I know what I want, but I don't know how to get it. So I just have to play. So I just added more little spots in there. I'm going to check on my... The crackle medium does take a very long time to dry. I am going to use a heat gun on it. Don't tell anybody. At least to get it dry to the touch. I thought I brought, it just went through my head. My mind's jumping all over the place. I thought I brought you guys a little sneak peek and I can't find her. Maybe in the end I'll find her. Oh, this is still, still too wet. This is wet. I'm going to dry it and then I'm going to go over it with some gesso. It has to be really dry. Okay. This is nice and crispy dry. Um, another way you can tone down and add a little more texture, which is something that I love doing, is I use one of these crummy brushes from um, Home Depot. I have no idea what they're made for. They shed like crazy on your walls. But I use them to get this effect on my work. So I'm going to take some of the gesso and I'm going to go I always work from my lid when I can because there's always good stuff in the lid that never gets used I forgot baby wipes, and I know there's some in here, but I don't want to hunt for them. So we're going to wipe down some of that. I didn't want to get a ton of it, a ton of gesso on my paper, but I got some. And that tones your colors down quite a bit. Because when you if I were going to put a little girl on here or a piece of furniture, I would want it to stand out a bit. 
um, this page is pretty pretty, but I want to try one more thing with it. It's pretty pretty. I have a lot of pink. So I am going to take a peony and I'm going to do why not? Why not just keep going? I saw that. I don't mind it so much because it is nice to have little spots. But I did want a little more pink. And then as I start doing my back, um, as I start putting things on my paper, um, this was a very busy background, so I just took, again, scraps of paper, a um, little bit of a doily. I actually sewed these down because I had my sewing machine out, and I thought, why not use it? And that gave me something that wasn't so busy that I could put my furniture pieces on. This was my entryway. Um, I wanted something very bold, so I did a magenta. Um, little table and a pot of flowers and I started practice. This is really, really, really hard for me to practice writing on a piece of artwork because you never know if you're going to mess up, if your pen is going to mess up. Um, I was okay with how this turned out, but the pen was too thin. I needed a different width. And what I what I wrote on the beginning of my journal, this is my first page, I wrote, Welcome to my little art house where anything is possible, a place where one can live a life full of color and whimsy. They say a foyer of a house should be most welcoming. What could be more welcoming than a vase full of roses? So, you know, just to practice my writing, just whatever comes into my head and get, get silly and just have fun with it. Just have fun. And I can't stress that enough. On the other side, okay, I was a little tired of writing, was over it, so I stamped using our letter stamps. A little saying, um, live your life in big bold color. And then I did use a little gel pen up here just to kind of play. And I have my little girl. On this piece, I kept the background um, with not a whole lot of color, so my sofa set against that pretty well. I didn't have to lay down another piece of paper. What I did do on this, which we'll do here, is I took some watercolor pencils and I just drew some flower shapes. This is kind of my flower shape that I do on almost all of my canvas pieces. And um, just a simple little shape. And I'm going to take a brush. My water is like, it looks like milk with green stuff in it. It's so thick. I'm going to take a brush and kind of get that wet. And I'll show you. I'll show you up here where I'm not working against pink. It shows a little better on the blue. But again, it's just another medium to add to the page to see what works on what. The watercolor pencil went over all of this beautifully. And um, it's just another added touch. And I took some stamps. 
you can always add stamps. I'm just using a Distress Ink here because that's just what I happened to pick up. And I didn't pick up a block, so this is still a little damp, so we're just going to see what happens. It's stamped. Again, this is just my practice little book. So things don't have to work. I want them to, but they don't have to. I'm not stressing about it. And the stamp is going over paint, gesso, well, gesso, paint, spray, gesso, ink. It's going over a lot of stuff, and it took beautifully. So there is that page. And as I'm going, I would write down everything that I am putting down, just so I know in the future. If I really like something, then I know what it is. And my little recipe cards slipping in. Super cute. Let's see if this is, my little thing is dry, my stove. It's dry enough. I put on a pretty thin coat of the crackle and I'm going to for those of you that have not seen the chipboard, it is um, embossed, or embossed, I guess that's what you would call it. I did not bring a brown pencil, which is what I should be using to um, go in my embossed lines. I have a red, so we're going to use red. Oh well, it's just practice. My embossed um, lines with the door and the buttons. I am just um, drawing on with some of this watercolor pencil. My buttons weren't really dry because they're kind of deep. And I'm going to take my paintbrush. I'm kind of scared. And I'm going to go in the lines to soften it up. And I don't want these straight. I don't want them perfect. I want them to look artsy. I'm not interested in making a card or layout, you know, where you have to have a little bit more perfection. I am interested in putting different mediums on top of different mediums to see how they, they look. And where's my refrigerator? And this is what they look like. To add to the kitchen of my little rooms. I'm going to keep going with a few more little. My paste on this is pretty dry. I found one of these little nifty things in my bag, so I thought, why not use it? This chalkboard paint, it just, it has such a neat texture. And I wish you guys could see the texture, but you can't. Because it has such a dry, I guess that's the look I'm part of word I'm looking for. It just has a kind of a dry look to it. 
so you can see all that open openness within the paint circles that I really like. Um, here's some. Should we do something with this? Hmm. What should we do? Never leave anything on your craft mat unused. That's the gold crackle, or no, I'm sorry. This was, what was this? Modeling paste with the chalk paint added to it. So we'll just use that up. I kind of wanted to try the crackle paste through this. The gold. Man, I should have grabbed more colors. Because this is more fun than I thought it would be. This is super, super shiny. It's really pretty. And I'm thinking that this flower is going to end up drying with a nice crackle. It's kind of weird because I'm not playing paper dolls today. I feel like I'm out of my element. So I guess the point of this is to grab a journal, it doesn't have to be my journal, but my journal is cute because the dollhouse is cute, and grab different me mediums and just play with them. Just have fun. Um, don't think about how it's going to turn out. Don't think about the colors you're using. Just do it. And um, whether it's watercolor, acrylic paints, the silk paints, um, there's those wonderful um, um, soft pastels out there and there's ink sticks and there's just so many different things out there that you can um, play with in your in your journaling pages and um, just do it without a care in the world and the chalkboard paints as we saw worked really really beautifully on paper which surprised me I just didn't think that that it would I just in my mind, it was in my own little world thinking that you were going to paint wood pieces and, and what have you, but it turns out to be a really nice paint on paper and canvas. Um, your modeling paste, add color, add your spray colors. Um, take a, let's see if it's dry, it's dry. Take a ink pad and then go over kind of dry. Let's do one where I can see. Um, and go over that modeling paste and see what happens with an ink pad. There's the pink that went over all those bumps. Really, really pretty. So I just encourage you guys to play. Just get your stuff out and play. There's tons of new mediums coming out from Prima. Um, these crackle Paste are coming out in a ton of different colors. Um, they're all shiny, they're all glitzy, they're all really pretty. The chalkboard paints, beautiful colors. 
you've already had the sprays. Um, the sprays can be added to the gessos that can be added to the modeling paste. So I just encourage you to get out there and play and write down what you're doing. Incorporate that in your journal somehow so you know what you're doing. So you can go back and recreate something if you want. So anyway, that's about all I have for you today. I've got a nice mess. My hands are a total mess. But um, I thank you guys for coming and sharing with me today. I hope I didn't bore you too much because I know you're used to doing paper dolls with me. Um, I'm going to read you some announcements. Oh dear. <laughs> Oh, Carrie, look what my copy did. There's that black space over um, some things that I needed to, to go over with you, so I'm going to wing it here. The next show is um, next Thursday, August 28th at 6.30 Pacific Time. Um, I think that would be 9.30 Eastern Time. It will be with Lamour, and she's um, creating some art journaling using the new uh, mediums also. She does great techniques, so I really encourage you guys to watch it, as I will. Um, Art Venture California, January 6th and 7th of next year. It's booking up fast. It's more than halfway full. You guys, if you're thinking about it, do it. It will be so much fun. Um, it, 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 it's just fun. You need to do it. Uh, special delivery kits. They're available on Live with Prima. Um, so go there, livewithprima.com, to see yours. It's, uh, oh my, it's covering up the price, but the kit value is $100. How much is that, Carrie? It's a $100 um, value, and if you have any questions, email frank at primamarketinginc.com. And um, that's about it. That's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for joining. See you next time.